In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today is the third Sunday of the month of Kiach, and the gospel today is from Luke chapter 1. I all the gospels of Kiach from Luke chapter 1, Shatri. But today, the, the part of Luke chapter 1 that the gospel is about is about the part about the visitation of St. Mary to Elizabeth. In the past few days or weeks, I've been obsessed about the idea of what a church is. Like, what is a church? And recently, I, I spoke about seven images of a church. And now, Mishak Karar, what we said, but again, I just, I said the church is the bride of Christ. We said the church is a spectrum of people. We said the church is a hospital. The church is an army. The church is a factory. The church is a good restaurant. The church is the body of Christ. And I spoke at length about each one of those things and to go think about it and figure it out. Um, but today I want to share with you five other things that we can learn about the church from the gospel of today. And the reason I was thinking about this is because St. Mary visiting Elizabeth represents something much deeper than just two pregnant women gathering together. St. Mary, as we say in the hymns of the church, she is the pride of the human race. And you know that she is a symbol of the church. Why is she a symbol of the church? Because the holies of holies, and we, like as we say in the hymns of the church and the midnight praises, that she, in her, dwelt the holies of holies, just like in the temple, the holies of holies dwelt in her. And in the New Testament, each one of us becomes temple of the Holy Spirit. If you're a temple of the Holy Church, Spirit, when this is a temple of the Holy Spirit, so then our bodies become churches. So the visitation of St. Mary, who has Christ in her womb, to visit St. Elizabeth, this is an image, or it brought to me the image of the church going to visit its people. And so, you can see in, in the gospel of today, five things that we can learn about the church. The first thing is, well, maybe before I tell you about the first thing, I need to tell you something. When I'm telling you about the job of the church, the job of the church, Taban, the first and foremost, my job as the priest that's because I'm telling you the function of the church. Is it just for me? Into andukum, a big portion of it. Into the members of the church. Into the body of the church too. So when I'm speaking about the functions of the church, I should be doing them and you should be doing them too. Okay? So first and foremost, what we see from the function of the church today is that the first lesson we learn is that the church will go to great lengths. The church will go to great lengths to serve its people. Why do I, I get this? Is because it says in the gospel today, after receiving the good news from the archangel, St. Mary, it says, it arose in those days and went into the hill country. What's astonishing is that, Yanni, if you Google it, it says that St. Mary traveled probably between 80 to 100 miles. Yanni, this, Yanni, it says it very simply, Kedda, she went into the hill country, but that St. Mary traveled 80 to 100 miles. To travel 80 to 100 miles in that time, how long would it take to travel 80 to 100 mi miles? Like, Masafa, like, it's a while, a trip. Yani, I was thinking, in our modern days, Mafish Haga, like, no one travels that long. Yani, if you want to travel from here to Australia, yani, it's a 24-hour flight, you'll be there. So imagine the struggle that St. Mary had to go through to go and visit St. Elizabeth. The message for us is that the church will go to great lengths to serve its people. The church is willing to go the extra mile. The people of the church should be willing to go 
the extra mile for its people. And actually, the Lord is the one who taught us this. Isn't he the one that taught us this? The Lord taught us not to be content with the 99, but to go after even the one. And so, you have 99, and you leave the 99, and it says that the, the good shepherd, he's going to search diligently for the, the one. That's the job of the church. It's the job, my job, and this is the job of every person, that the church is actively seeking for everyone to come back to the church. And when the shepherd finds the sheep, what does he do? He puts it on his shoulder and he comes back rejoicing that he found his lost sheep. So no distance, no cost, no amount of effort, no amount of commitment. Damon, when we ask people, can you do this service in the church? They say, oh, I can't commit to this or this or this or this. This is too much commitment. The church has to be willing to go the extra mile, not to be scared of commitment to serve its people. The second function of the church that we see is that the church needs to serve with, with energy, with passion, with haste. It, Saint Mary, she went the extra mile, but she did it immediately. Right when the angel came to her, she just she took off. It says that she went with haste, sense of urgency in the church. She could have said, Elizabeth is six months pregnant. That means I have three more months. The travel is one week. Uh, I can chill for a little bit. And then I can go to visit St. Elizabeth at a later time. She could have said that. But that's not... The, the, the church has to serve with haste, with energy, with passion. And I feel that many times these days... We have no urgency in the spiritual life. No urgency at all. Oh, I'm just going to church. Oh, okay. Oh. What? Where's the urgency? There is a, a saint that we celebrated yesterday. His name is Saint Abracus. Say that with me. Saint Abracus. So you remember the name. Saint Abracus. Abracus, he was a monk. And he was living a, a monastic life, a very holy life. The devil appeared to him. And do you know what the devil told him? Because this monk was like serving God with all his passion, all his desire. So the devil appeared to him and said, Saint Abracus, why are you like tiring yourself? Take your ease. You still have 50 more years to live. Just relax. No reason to strain, like, strain yourself with fasting and prayer and all this stuff. Take it easy. Relax. Why are you waking up early? Why are you doing all these things for God? You still have a long time. You know what St. Abracus did? He said, Devil, thank you for telling me I have 50 more years. I thought I had 75. So it says he even more... And then the amazing part of the story is that it says in the Sinexar, it says he passed away later that year. Because the devil, the devil was trying to trick him so he could be lazy in his spiritual life, to neglect the word of God, to ne neglect confession, neglect, say, oh, you have a long time, don't worry about it, just take your ease, live your life, you can come back to God later. St. Abracus didn't, like, didn't take this. He said, no, I need to... I need to struggle more now. And the Lord saw his struggle and, and took him. The devil is always trying to make us lax and lazy in our spiritual life. The devil is always trying to convince us to delay our repentance. And I was just reading about the trial of St. Paul before Felix the governor. Felix the governor da, is a bad man. Bad man. And he was, he was with his wife. His wife, his name is Drusilla. They married and living in sin. And St. Paul had to give a testimony before Felix. And it seems that Drusilla, she was Jewish, so she had some background about Christianity or the way. So, 
when she heard St. Paul speaking about resurrection and things, like Felix put him in prison and said, come here, St. Paul, and brought him into his private, and they had a meeting together to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with St. Paul. And St. Paul, in his one-on-one -on -one with the governor Felix, he started to tell Felix, he said, like in the, the Bible says, he spoke about three topics. The three topics were righteousness, self-control, and judgment. Because Felix is the one judging St. Paul about the like, And it says that St. Paul spoke to him about these three things. Lord knows that St. Paul saw into the soul of this person and was giving him these words. Say, I know you are living in sin. You need to live righteously. You need to have self-control to control your lust, to control your desires, to control your passion. You need to remember that you will be judged on judgment day. And it says, after St. Paul had given him the, those words, it says that Felix was shaking. But you know what Felix said after that? You know what Felix said after? He said, uh, go away for now, go away for now, and I will call you back at a convenient time. Don't tell me to repent now. Don't tell me to change my self-control. I'll figure that out at a more convenient time. Then the next sentence of the Bible says, he left and then another governor replaced him and we never hear about Felix that ever again. The church has to serve with haste, not to delay or procrastinate in our spiritual life. The gospel always talks about today is the day of salvation. This is the day that the Lord has made. We don't talk about tomorrow. God knows what will happen tomorrow as we saw in the story of Saint Abrac what's his name? Abracus. We don't know. So today is the day of repentance. Today is the day to return to the Lord. The church must serve with sense of urgency. This is matters of life and death. So we don't delay matters of life and death. We make decisions about that now. The third characteristic of the church is... The church has to be a place of love. A place of love. Ah, love. When St. Mary and St. Elizabeth, they came together, I imagine that the house, could you imagine being in the house with St. Elizabeth and St. Mary? The relationship, were they fighting over, me and I am going to... No, the house full of love and because they cared so deeply about each other and even saint elizabeth was so grateful and so appreciative of saint mary that she said why is this granted to me that the mother of the lord should come to me i feel that the house full of appreciation in your houses your church or is it full of appreciation is it full of tenderness is it full of warmth and love that's how the church should be. And that's why the Catholic epistle today says, he who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness. Oh, Tiftikro, you come to church and you have hatred toward anybody and you come and you say a lot of praises and you do these things and you take communion, that this is good. Not good. <laughs> this is not good. You have to love each other. Not only do you have to love each other, because that's easy. Everybody says you love each other. Okay. Love that means that you need to have relationship with each other. Oh. Relationship with each other? That means I have to know you. You have to know me. We have to love each other. That's what a church is. The church is an assembly of people who... Love each other. How do you love people you don't even know? Yeah, you can just love them in thought. Okay, that's great. But is that all that the church is supposed to be? I just love you. I love you guys in thought. What? That's not church. That's not a community. That's not love. Love has to be relationship. And Finas that come to church, they come and take communion, and they don't even know anybody in the church. They don't care about anybody in the church. They come take communion and leave. Ida. How is that? Where's the love in that? 
Where is the love in that? If you're partaking in the body of Christ, you have to be part of the, the body. You have to be part of the body. St. John Chrysostom, he says something very nice. He says, the communion table, the communion table is particularly, particularly effective in urging us toward friendliness. Yet many of us who participate in the communion don't even know each other. St. John Chrysostom saying, how you partake in the communion and you don't even know each other. And then he says, some blame, and to Hatulu, eh, St. John Chrysostom, he says, some will blame that there's too many people. You want me to know everybody in the church? St. John Chrysostom, Biul Keda, he says, some may blame the large number of participants, but he says, it's not because there's a large number of participants. He says, it's because you're lazy. Sorry. He says it because you're indifferent. You don't care to know anybody. He says, in the early days, there were 3,000 or 5,000 believers, and he says, yet they were of one soul, and now people don't even know their brothers, and they blame the size of the congregation. And they say, oh, we have two churches, oh, oh, no, no, that's too long, oh, yeah. Church has to be a place, a center of love, love for God and love for man. And that's why I want everyone to look, Yanni, to your neighbor. Get a look around. Look around. Look around. Get a, get a. Do you know everybody, Hannah? After liturgy? Not now. After liturgy? To know each other. You have to know each other. To welcome each other. This makes the heart of Jesus Yikun very happy to see his people love each other, welcome each other. The fourth aspect of the church is that I want us to realize that in the church we have to serve in the church and we serve even when maybe we're unqualified or even when I need service. Yani, I will serve regardless of where I am. I need to serve. How do I, where did I get this point from? Is that St. Mary, she is going to serve St. Elizabeth. And St. Mary is, she needs to be served. She didn't go and serve St. Elizabeth and say, Tabmin, hey, serve me. She went and served St. Elizabeth and gave to St. Elizabeth all her efforts. Because God is strengthening St. Mary. God, the Holy Spirit is dwelling in St. Mary. So, what I see in the church often is that the servants burn out. Or they, you know, don't have energy. Or, oh, I'm tired. Or this. No, you serve. And by your service, you will be served. By your service, when you serve others, when you take the lowest place, when you dig into the scriptures for yourself to prepare a lesson, to do this, to clean, you are being, like God will reward you and serve you. You believe this or no? That's why the Acts of today, it spoke about, it spoke about Moses. You know what the people said about Moses? It said the first line of the Acts of today, it said, Who made you ruler and a judge over us? That's what they said to Moses. Why did they say that to Moses? Why? No, just because they were hungry. Shen, he killed an Egyptian. So this is a, a, a murderous man. And God is choosing a murderous man to be his servant. What if Moses said, la, 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 not me. He did. But God chose to use Moses in his service and made, the scripture says, he made Moses a god in front of Pharaoh. So God is using people, no matter their qualifications, no matter their background. The important thing is that these people humble themselves and they serve. And God can use you 
no matter what your background. And when you serve, God will serve you, and God will help you. So we should serve one another, and don't make an excuse and say, oh, I'm not qualified, oh, I'm not this, oh, I'm not this, oh, I'm this, oh, and then we have the whole list of, you know, things. The last thing, sorry, and I'm very passionate about this topic, the church should be a center of praise. When Elizabeth and St. Mary, they came together, what did they do? They start gossiping? Did they start gossiping? No. What did they start doing? They started praising, praising. And Elizabeth started praising and saying a bunch of wonderful words. And then what did St. Mary said? She said, my soul magnifies the Lord. When we come to church, our soul should magnify the Lord. Now think about the amazing thing that God has done for us. And so we are coming here to the church. The church should be a center of praise, a center of worship. Yeah? Church, we said five things about the church today. You remember any of them? We said the church will go to great lengths. It will travel the extra mile to serve its people. Number two, it will serve with... With haste. It will serve with haste. Number three, the church should be a place of love, center for love, spilling love and truth to everyone. Number four, we serve even despite our imperfections. Even though if we need service, we will serve and God will serve us. And number five, the church has to be a center for praise. To praise God, to thank God. God is the center. Oh, we're not coming here to be entertained. We're not coming here to like, congregate or have a social club or an ethnic club or to do any of those things. We are coming here to, to praise God. This is the power of the church. Yeah? And glory be to God forever. Amen.